Hello people, in this video, let us look at this Moore-Renz corneal ulcer. So this is basically an ulcer of the cornea, right? But uh, they don't know why it happens. So it is idiopathic keratitis. So the guess is that it is because of immune, immune mediated. Look at the definition here, Moore-Renz. Moore-Renz ulcer is a peripheral degenerative ulcerative keratitis of unknown etiology. They do not know why. So unknown means idiopathic. They are also saying it is chronic, chronic serpiginous or rodent ulcer. Serpiginous um, maybe because it's like a serpent or something. What do you say? But why rodent? Let's see if we can understand rodent. But rodent ulcer basically we have seen this terminology rodent ulcer in basal cell carcinoma if you remember. <coughs> so here you should always say corneal rodent ulcer. Otherwise, rodent ulcer usually refers to basal cell carcinoma, if you remember. It is characterized by shallow furrow-shaped ulcer. Oh, that's why rodent, furrow, furrow-shaped ulcer. Okay. Having whitish overhanging margin at the advancing edge. Let's try to understand this. Let's look at this and see if we can make sense of that. <coughs> Okay, furrow shaped, white margin at advancing, what was that, advancing edge, whitish overhanging margin at the ed advancing edge, okay. So that is why serpiginous or rodent, corneal rodent also, kind of makes sense now, okay. <clears throat> Exact etiology, they do not know. They think probably it could be autoimmune disease. Antibodies against the corneal epithelium have been demonstrated. That means it is autoimmune, right? They have found that there are autoimmune causes. So, if they ask somebody, if what is the immune mediated corneal ulcer? You say Moorens ulcer or what is it also called as? Hmm, what was the other name? Serpiginous. Go with Mooren, okay? Now, let's move on. There are two clinical varieties in this. They are saying there is a benign or a limited form which is unilateral. So, it is affecting only one eye in elderly Caucasians and it is relatively slow. All these are good, right? It is slow. It is benign or it is limited. It is unilateral, only one side. So, it is very slow. This is a very good kind of thing. Then there is a virulent type. There is a virulent type. <clears throat> Let's see this virulent type. That will be progressive. It's bilateral. And it occurs in young African patients. So it is in young African patients. Otherwise the benign one was an elderly Caucasian. So after a long time. In the end, some let's say like that it is coming. So it is okay. Some kind of a okay thing. It's slow growing. So in elderly, it shouldn't be a problem. But this one is virulent in young people. It's progressive, bilateral, rapidly progressive. The ulcer is rapidly progressive. And there is high, <clears throat> high incidence of scleral involvement. So everything seems to be bad, bad, bad. <clears throat> Where is sclera now? Let us see. This is sclera. Right? This white... Behind the conjunctiva, right? So, scleral involvement also can be there, but in the virulent progressive type. Look at the symptoms. Okay, here it says there is severe pain, photophobia. So, you can look at these terms severe pain, photophobia, lacrimation, defective vision. So, obviously, the cornea has ulcer, means defective vision will be there, right? Okay, let's move on. What are the signs? Signs means what? When you check what, you will see. So, what will you see? Same thing they are saying. Superficial ulcer. See, there is a very nice terminology here. It is superficial. It is a superficial thing. Okay. Superficial ulcer. It starts at the corneal margin. It starts as a, at the corneal margin as patches of grey infiltrates which coalesce to form shallow furrow over the whole cornea. Furrow, don't forget this word, furrow, shallow furrow, superficial, grey infiltrates. 
Peripheral ulcer is associated with undermining of epithelium and superficial stromal lamellae. Okay, so what and all is affected here? Epithelium. Epithelium. Superficial stromal lamellae. At the advancing border, which forms a characteristic whitish overhanging edge. Okay, that's why it looks like furrow or what. This whitish overhanging edge, they are mentioning it even in the definition, right? Can you see that whitish overhanging edge here? We'll take a white only and mark it. Wait. Here you go. They are referring to that. Okay. Base of the ulcer soon becomes vascularized. The spread may be self-limiting or progressive. Like we told you, there are two things, right? Either one is limited, the other is progressive. Vascularized is not at all a good thing, right? The cornea should not vascularize because cornea is a vascular structure. So if it gets vascularized, that means if blood vessels start growing, then the cornea will lose its transparency. Okay. At the end stage, the cornea is thinned and conjunctivalized. So basically what they are saying here is, where is conjunctiva? Conjunctiva, at least in this context, you can say this is the conjunctiva, where you have the transparent mucous membrane, which is covering the eyeball, except over the cornea. So that is the conjunctiva. And where is the cornea? This is the cornea. Right, the circle. So now they are saying the cornea is thinned and conjunctivalized. So it is becoming like conjunctiva. Some good news here, the re ulcer rarely perforates. It rarely perforates and the sclera remains uninvolved. But they said in the virulent, which affects young African patients, that there is high incidence of scleral involvement. Okay. So what were we looking at? The signs here they said the ulcer rarely perforates. That means it is not going to cause a hole in the cornea. Rarely only it will cause a hole in the cornea. Sclera remains uninvolved. So what are they saying? This is the cornea, right? So what will happen? The epithelium is affected. The stroma can be affected, right, of the cornea. And very rarely only th there can be perforation, complete holing of this. So what are they saying? It will be superficial only. There will be shallow furrow, peripheral ulcer. You can see here it's peripheral, right? Peripheral ulcerative keratopathy, PUK. Okay. So what and all is happening? The epithelium, the superficial stromal lamellae, all that are affected. So usually what layers of the cornea are affected? The epithelium and the stroma. This is important. At the end stage, the cornea is thinned and conjunct conjunctivalized okay let's mark that at, at the end stage the cornea will become so thin and conjunctivalized okay imagine if the cornea is so thin then it can perforate right but they're saying perforation is rare in the treatment guys they're saying we don't know the cause so we cannot treat easily so treatment will be unsatisfactory but you can try the following things corticosteroids why because you want immune suppression. If it is because of immune, autoimmune, then you are giving immune suppressant, right? Topical corticosteroids. Again, this is not so successful. Immunosuppressive therapy. So you are going to suppress the immune with what? With cyclosporin, with cytotoxic agents. Okay. Cytotoxic agents they are using in virulent type of disease. Immunosuppression with cyclosporin or other cytotoxic agents may be quite useful in virulent type of disease. Okay. Soft contact lenses have been used for pain relief. Soft contact lens, how will it help? Shield, like a shield against this. What do you see? Lamellar or full thickness corneal grafts often melt or vascularize. Oh, that's a negative statement, isn't it? So they are saying if you do corneal transplant, which is lamellar, 
or penetrating keratoplasty they will melt or vascularize what the hell so you can't give them a corneal transplant okay so that can't be a treatment right that can't be a treatment mode because they are saying if you do that then it will melt or vascularize okay let's take a recap so in this video we wanted to look at murin's corneal ulcer we did not get uh, justification for why it is called murin's <clears throat> anyways we know now that it is idiopathic we, people don't know the cause unknown etiology but they think it is autoimmune because they have found some antibodies against the corneal epithelium right so it is chronic serpiginous corneal rodent ulcer <clears throat> what will you see here shallow furrow shaped ulcer shallow furrow shaped ulcer it is shallow remember it is not going to be very deep right what is it affecting the epithelium and the anterior part of the stroma only right and white overhanging margin at the advancing edge okay we saw that it is uh, autoimmune two clinical varieties one is slow one is virulent severe pain don't forget photophobia lacrimation defective vision signs basically here this is what we want to focus on there's a superficial ulcer shallow furrow shallow furrow over the whole cornea they are saying superficial ulcer it starts at the corneal margin please this is a very important word margin it starts at the margin it starts at the margin <clears throat> as patches of gray infiltrates then it will coalesce to form a shallow furrow over the whole cornea okay so at the margins they will start and then they will start coalescing to form a shallow furrow over the whole cornea peripheral ulcer will be there okay where what and all is affected there there is undermining of epithelium and superficial stromal lamellae superficial stromal lamellae at the advancing border which forms a characteristic whitish overhanging edge base of ulcer can become vascularized it will become vascularized they're saying it will soon become vascularized okay and then they said that the spread can be self limiting or progressive how is it going people end stage what will happen cornea will become thin and conjunctivalized rarely it will perforate and the sclera remains uninvolved then we saw treatment you uh, can give try giving corticosteroids immunosuppressives like cyclosporin cytotoxic agents for virulent type of disease soft contact lens for pain relief okay uh, uh, corneal grafts melt or vascularize